open your ears and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. This is Steiny. Let's talk about former officer Kim Potter. Where is she now? She is out of prison after oh. serving her time for accidentally killing Dante Wright when pulling her handgun instead of her taser. Which would have been in 2021, right? Yes, because yeah, was right I on the was trial. working for the kids' mental health hospital while it all unfolded. And holy shit, was everybody that was Gen Z around there and not white pissed off. Well, because you were in one town north of where this all happened. Yep. So here's the deal. Kim Potter is out now, Mm -hmm. and she is working with the former prosecutor that went after her in her case to try to utilize her experience to educate other officers about awareness in high-tension or high-stress situations like that to be more aware of what you're grabbing. Because for her, how many times did she train at pulling the gun with the right? Yep. Yep. And that's why they put the taser on the other side. You cross-draw, so you have to go and always know. And she mixed it up. And so now she's involved in this program that is pissing off Dante Wright's family. Like, why does she get to earn money doing this? Why does she get to be involved with the cops again doing a job? Because, yeah, you're, you're free now. You get to be with your family. He doesn't. Oh. There's a point there. Right, yeah. But... Do you honestly expect her, who did not maliciously kill him, to just not earn a living ever again? I'm really shocked at that. I would think that the earning the living side, apart from it, as Dante Wright's family, wouldn't you want to see her using this experience for good? Like, which is training the police force as a whole to not make the same mistakes she did. That's exactly what she's doing is she wants to utilize her own tragedy yeah. to inform others to try to prevent wow. future tragedy. Okay. So yes, she is making money off of the tragedy, but in a way that benefits others to try to help them. She's not like writing a book about her time in prison and how she lost her life and was forced to lose her job and this, that, and the other. She's not being celebrated she's not becoming a personality where she goes from radio talk show to radio talk show and gets uh glad handed by fox news for being demonized for this mistake it was a grandiose mistake it's the worst thing you can do as a cop pretty much is to accidentally kill someone in error we're not talking about deciding to stop kneeling on somebody's back and fucking you know suffocate them that's a whole nother can of worms that could have been totally avoided but anyways well, it doesn't sound like she's doing the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, like you were just saying, becoming this big pundit for and going Gun even rides. and going even farther down the the rabbit hole, so to say. I, on one hand, I can kind of empathize and I can sympathize for the family, right? But you also have an understanding that this woman has to continue to make a living, right? She has to move forward with her life, you know. I guess unless you feel, I mean, what jobs would you feel that are appropriate? One that doesn't involve her past experience with law enforcement or the situation. I mean, is that that's probably the only thing that the family would accept, right? Because anything else, she's technically profiting off of this tragedy. I hate that it has been so many fucking years since that went down in, what was it, Florida? George, uh, what the fuck was his name? Was acting like a cop that shot the kid that just had the fucking iced tea and the Skittles. Uh, the the hoodie. He was wearing the, the hoodie. Um, I hate that I can't remember his name because this has happened so many times. No. Trayvon Martin. Yes. And he was killed by George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman. Well, I, yeah, I don't know why I forgot, but you're absolutely right. Yeah. What Kim Potter did was tragic and terrible, but it was in the effect of a traffic stop where Dante Wright jumped back in the car. And there's people, and I always go to the comment sections to see how fucking out of control the liberal hug thuggery gets. Oh, the the comment section is where you want to see the worst of society. <laughs> so one guy's like, what is she doing? What, teaching cops how to remember left from right? And it's just like, cops have a dangerous job, and we pay them accordingly and bestow upon them a sense of responsibility and power to possibly take a life 
if theirs or others are being threatened. It's not about she was just protecting her own life. This kid jumped behind the wheel of the car and tried to drive away. In a neighborhood. And the unfortunate nature is, is that this was a rookie cop that pulled him over. It wasn't her. Yeah. She was a vet. And the fucking idiot didn't shut the car door, didn't bring him to the back of the car. I've talked about this ad nauseum. He had a warrant. I don't care what the warrant was for. He had a warrant. He had open cases for gun-related things. This is not Trayvon Martin. This is not a tragedy mm-hmm. in the same sense. Trayvon was innocent. He was basically guilty of walking while black at night through the wrong the neighborhood. neighborhood. Right. And Dante Wright was kind of a piece of shit. I don't give a good goddamn how anybody that would know him would want to call me names and wish death upon me for it. Okay, he's alleged to have shot a 16-year-old kid in the head. He's posing. I saw the social media post of him smoking blunts, drinking beer, and fucking waving guns. He was immersed in gangster culture, and he was romanticizing this badassery. And then there were other times where he robbed people. I mean, he fucking did bad things. This is the same as George Floyd, kind of, in terms of, you know, he did a lot of bad things. Mm-hmm. And my argument with Floyd is, show me another saint that was guilty of pointing a gun at the belly of a pregnant woman and threatening the life of their unborn child over a fucking robbery. Well, in the police report, right? Either way, you're not a fucking saint. He's not St. George. Saint. Fuck this shit. Because nothing pisses me off more than the fact that there's a fucking mural of that guy and a statue of him, and they're writing a musical about his life. Dude... Where the fuck is the statue for Terrell Mays Jr.? Who, if you don't know that name, it's a case that I still fucking well up with tears about when I talk about that kid. He is playing with family members. He's like two or three. He's playing with family members, and they hear gunfire. And a bullet comes through the goddamn wall and kills this kid. Mm -hmm. And his mother has never gotten the peace, and they've never caught anybody, and nobody knows nothing, and nobody said shit. That was how many years ago now? I remember that. 13 or 14 fucking years ago. It still bugs me behind Jacob Wetterling that is the number one case that bothers me oh, yeah. okay this is not like the kid whose name I can't remember whose dad kidnapped him and act like he disappeared but what he really did was kill the son Ooh. and throw him in the fucking drainage pipe I'm glad you brought that up because that's the one that never leaves my brain because I drive every time I drive by on 94 mm-hmm. I know the park it's the park just before you get up to uh, 694 on the right, on the basically the eastern side as you're heading north. Uh, it's that park. You can actually see the drainage thing from the other side. If you're on the east side, yeah, it's, it's, it, it haunts me because I still think about that poor little boy. The reason why that man did it was for the insurance money. He killed his own son for insurance money. Barway Collins, is that his yep. name? That's yep. the kid. Okay, every yep. time I bring up these cases, I want to make sure I say these fucking names. Yep. To the point of Kim Potter and people talking shit, you know, I said she has to earn a living and cops are not robots. And how many people have been in stressful situations and not been able to act on their training? It's like, imagine if you're backing out of a parking spot in just a lot at Target. Oh, yeah. And somebody pulls out right there and scares you. You lock up the brakes, but instantly, you know, your brain's not always going to remember the controls are reversed because you're backing up. Yep. That shit happens. People make mistakes. There's a it's lot of terrible. people she did it. who run into their own garages, right? Because they put it panic. In drive it, instead of reverse. Reverse. Yeah, exactly. Right? Your, your brain's just not doing the motions right. This is not somebody that wanted to have killed this kid. This is not somebody who was happy about what she did. I mean, you look at how she, her appearance prior and then just after. The life left her. Oh, yeah. In that moment, she's like, oh, my God. I got a completely different sense of uh, of it from her than what's his nuts in George Floyd's case, right? Derek Chauvin was not feeling the remorse. And to a certain extent, some of those officers should not have been charged because they were scared to say something to I their always, training officers. And it's like, the I guy's first the, fucking the, shift. Come right, on. The, the guy's three days out on the job was at Thomas Lane. I did feel, I still feel bad for that guy, right? And he's the only one who said anything. 
There's the picture of Terrell Mays Jr. and his mom that they used in the media. Yeah, this is I a story that. where it talks yeah. about he was three years old, bullet comes through the wall. Yeah. That's 13 fucking years ago. Look at that beautiful, smiling little boy's face. Yeah. Didn't deserve He any of that. died because of a fucking stray bullet and gang bullshit. And you cannot tell me that that kid's case doesn't need to be solved, but that he shouldn't have a fucking statue. So, interestingly enough, just today I was listening to NPR News, as I'm off to do since I'm a middle-aged man. They just got their first conviction of gang members on racketeering charges in Minneapolis. They are actually using these these federal, like... The RICO Act. RICO and, Acts and things like that to start going after people in Minneapolis for gang and gang-related activity. Fucking good. Right. It, it seems like, to me, it seems like something that should have happened like 30 years ago, but okay. Yeah, no shit. During um, Murderapolis? Yeah, in the 80s when things were really starting to get really bad. Coincidentally enough, my family lived there in 1984. That's when we moved up from Madison. And it was shortly after that when we moved out of the neighborhood and then went back and visited some of our friends that we saw, like, gang graffiti and all sorts of stuff. It was The neighborhood changed pretty quick after that. Let me go back to the main point of this, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, after Kim Potter serves her sentence, she meets with the prosecutor who charged her case. She wants to work to do something to help other officers avoid taking a life. So the prosecutor saw the presentation as a path towards redemption for officers who have erred and an opportunity to promote healing in communities already shaken by police misconduct. This is from Yahoo News, and it's originally from uh, Alternative Press. So further on, you got Dante's mom, Katie, who said the plan amounts to an enraging scheme where her son's killer would turn a profit from his death and to dredge up painful memories in the process. She's got to earn a living. And she's doing something to honor the idea that she made this mistake and to prevent others from doing the same thing. So in a way, this is her mea culpa that honors your son's death. She's not like, well, I did my time, so what can I do now? She's trying to dedicate her life to a greater purpose now. Yeah. What what I'm what I'm seeing in the mom's quote there is still a lot of pain. I I think if she was beyond some of that pain, I don't think that would be her her message, right? I think I think it's just too much. But I get where she's coming from. But at the yeah. same time, I would love to hear one of these family members go. He was on the wrong path, and he was doing terrible things, and he made a really bad decision, and I'm not saying he deserved it, but I can't feel totally bad because he shouldn't have done it. How many people... Wasn't it George Floyd's like stepdad talking about uh, the precinct, like, burn this bitch down? I don't He's, remember. He said that yeah. during a press conference, I believe. So many of these people are like, how fucking dare you? Now, there's tons of black men, unfortunately, that have died because they were holding a cell phone at the wrong time of day around cops and they thought it was a gun and they died mm. right those are the most tragic then there's cases like years ago i believe it was chicago laquan mcdonald laquan mcdonald's a case that i made a point of bringing up years ago when it happened okay he had been tampering with cars i'm air quoting here mm -hmm. and maybe he was breaking into cars and should have been arrested what he damn sure didn't deserve to get was an entire fucking mag emptied into his body that cop shot him as he was walking away ignoring their commands, commands to stop and once he was on the ground he kept shooting him and that cop got convicted and he fucking deserved it i think i remember that one uh, the name was familiar so that's why i kind of paused so i'm bringing up other cases yeah. like this is a spectrum of morality here kim potter didn't mean to shoot him and now she's trying to do something good that cop that shot Laquan McDonald did intend to shoot him and was gratuitous and recklessly neglectful in trying to de-escalate the situation. He killed a kid. Mm. A kid. It was like a teen or a, a, was he between 18 and 20. Summer's in there. Still a kid, honestly. Killed him. Deserved to go to fucking prison. Uh, Derek Chauvin. All he had to do was get up. Yep. But at the same time, don't fucking tell me that George Floyd didn't know that $20 bill that's never been fucking found wasn't counterfeit when they found other counterfeit $20 bills in the fucking vehicle. And then, you know, the fentanyl that was in his system with the still shot of the fucking white whatever it was on his tongue. Come on, dude. He doesn't go into that bodega that day. He's still here. And if those other cops are like, 
Derek, come on. There's right. people here. They're concerned. We, well, let's set them up. Or get up. You know, if this is too much. Yeah. This isn't, God, the tragedy that is Terrell Mays Jr. shooting where they haven't found him yet and they deserve to fucking die. Mm. I don't care who you are or what you say. Those motherfuckers that shot that bullet that killed that little boy deserve to fucking die. This isn't George Zimmerman shooting Trayvon Martin because, frankly, George Zimmerman can fuck off all the way to hell. Mm-hmm. That was stupid. I, I'll go even for Casey Anthony. She fucking killed her daughter, dude. Oh, yeah. And then basically got away with it by fucking her scumbag lawyer. She deserves to die. Kim Potter deserves a second lease on life, and she has a family. Now, did she kill someone? Yes. In this instance, does she deserve to die? I would say no, because of the gray area of the lack of intent to kill. So let her fucking do this. She's out there trying to make a difference, man. And you could train every cop for years and years and years on what to do with a firearm and a taser. All right? Mistakes are made. It's called human error. It's fucking egregious. But there's collateral deaths in war, too, when you think that you got some intel about some insurgents and you call in a fucking airstrike and it killed civilians. This woman wants to help people. So as much as angry people of a certain community who don't want to take responsibility for the actions of their members can't see fit to ever think a cop is a good person, she's at least trying to atone. And I don't think there's any other way that you could do that that's better, that would satisfy the family, short of her, like, getting killed. And they'd be like, well, good, she got what she deserved. Or she's doing it for free, right? You know what I mean? Not making any money off of it somehow. Where does it end? I I don't know. I guess my question becomes is what, you know, don't you want to see something beneficial come out of this? Don't you want to see something better happen for all this tragedy? Don't you want to see something better come out of it? To me, it seems like a good start. Yeah, because I felt terrible for her. Here's the top comment. It's got 350 thumbs up and 82 thumbs down. Her actions were not intentional, but they were criminally negligent. A very sad story all around. You cannot summarize it any more simplistic, clear, concise, and and hitting the nail right on the head than that. Then, Then you get this fucking idiot. I don't know why she needs to give a speech telling other officers to become very familiar with where their weapons are in their duty belt and to practice, practice, practice. The follow up, well, people know they shouldn't drink and drive, but they still do it anyway because bad stuff happens to other people. Sometimes getting a more personal reminder about some of the inherent dangers of certain actions can be more sobering. Yes. That was going to be my comment. She has to relive it. Well, I guess I don't know this program, right? I don't know what she's going to talk about. I don't know what her approach is going to be. But if she's talking about, hey, I did this, don't do this, she basically has to relive it every time she's doing this, right? That's on top of any residual guilt. Like, imagine I was going to say, if she's anything like about a, this yeah, shit, you know. or you're sitting there eating breakfast and yeah. you, you are watching TV and something fucking triggers you and you it brings it all back. She has to live with this. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. Well, Here's one more comment I want to read. Mm-hmm. I watched the footage of the incident. No one forced this guy to run from police. He brought what happened entirely on himself. Where do people get the idea that they can do whatever they please and don't have to follow any rules or laws? Her being punished for what happened was outrageous. Uh, well, I not exactly, but yes, kind of. Well, when your when your negligence is rises to the level where a life was taken, there has to be some repercussions. There has to be some type of punishment, even if it's accidental. Yep. So I'm all for what she's doing, and I wish more people would be forgiving in the sense of seeing what this is truly as. Not, she killed him and now she gets to make money helping cops. Fuck off. We should be training cops so they can be better at their job, so that the faith that we put in them to do the job that they're sworn to do, they're better at. Right. Well, and instead of scaring people away from the job, you want to encourage people to take the job on. If they have the right training, they'll be more, you know, inclined to do the job well and they won't have such a bad rap yes exactly interact with the show on twitter at what do we call it that is at what do we call it you can find us on facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show for the what do we call it podcast i'm j man this is tiny and that's the end